Philippines has had so much potential, still has so much potential, and now finally the potential is being realized. It's been an exciting decade, I think, not only for the Philippines, but for the whole of Southeast Asia. And I think it's a wonderful time to be looking at our country with fresh eyes. We are a live museum of how a free democracy builds itself. The world's second largest archipelago, the Republic of the Philippines, is located in Southeast Asia. It is divided into three distinct administrative and economic regions. The capital city is Manila. A heightened sense of optimism and change is sweeping the Philippines. Once known as Southeast Asia's economic laggard, the Philippines of today is trying to bring in the promise of clean politics and national prosperity. In 2010, Benigno Aquino won a landslide victory to become the nation's 15th president. He inherited a nation entrenched in poverty and a government plagued by corruption. While he isn't immune to criticism, the Filipino people are giving the president a chance to finally bring change to the republic. I want to leave the world a lot better than how I found it. And I want to see this country transformed to such an extent that people who have not visited us in the last two years and in the next four will probably say they can, really can't recognize the country anymore. I inherited a mess. We were called the sick man of Asia. We posted 6.3% growth in GDP for the first quarter, 5.9% in the second quarter, which gives us an average of 6.1% for the first semester, which is above our projections of between 5 to 6% in the midst of the global economic uncertainty. I guess what I'm trying to say in the bottom line is, the Philippines has had so much potential, still has so much potential, and now finally the potential is being realized. Cuts in interest rates, low inflation, and the government's plan to spend more aggressively are renewing investor confidence. Doing business in the Philippines is not without its challenges, but it is now one that is more transparent and open. The fundamentals are very strong. Consumption is there. People are positive. Uh, investments, domestic investments, is, is literally overflowing. The other thing that we can really be proud of is that we've stayed the course. President Aquino has sacrificed political capital to do the right thing. This is the kind of leadership that the Philippines needs. It's about implementing the right rules. It's about collecting the right taxes. And people are slowly but surely also changing. People are now saying, no, let's do it right this time around. Despite the negative impact of the global economic crisis on the country's export industry, the Philippines is performing better than its regional neighbors. In 2010, the country's real GDP increased by 7.6%, its highest in more than 30 years. The International Monetary Fund estimates the Philippines' GDP at $216 billion in 2011. Why is that happening and why is that a good thing at this point in time? Number one, you know, we have this consumer-led growth that's quite unique to, to, to us. Number two, um, our government um, is far more serious and far more organized from a macroeconomic point of view uh, at this point in its history. Uh, we have the largest amount of foreign exchange reserves ever in our history, over $70 million. That's unheard of in our country. That gives it a sense of stability and gives the currency a strength that it has not had in the past. At the same time, on the fiscal side, our management of our finances as our country, um, we are in a far more stable state than ever before. Our, I guess our deficit as a percentage of GDP is far lower now than ever before. That gives our government uh, the wherewithal, uh, the tools to be able to pump prime our economy. But it certainly puts us apart to the rest of the world at this time. The Philippine government realizes that simply relying on domestic sources for capital does not improve its liquidity position, prompting a strong push for foreign direct investment into the country. 
grand reforms are already pursued by the administration to trigger further change through more efficient business processes and a level playing field. For many market players, the good governance thrust has been beneficial. An increase in government spending under the public-private partnership program is likely to stimulate economic growth in 2012. This is a narrow window of, of opportunity for our country where so many good things are happening and I think it's a wonderful time to be looking at our country with fresh eyes. We now believe that our country is headed towards much more progress than we've seen in, in recent history. We now believe that our country can move forward. We now believe that we can fall in step with the rest of Asia as, as, the, as the area of the world where the greatest growth and prosperity will take place in the coming decades and in the coming century. The Philippines is tackling its political, social and economic problems head on. The Philippines was one of the richest countries in Asia in the 1950s, second only to Japan but has never really been able to achieve the growth of the Asian tiger nations. Has the Philippines finally turned a sharp corner? This administration has shown the world that the Filipinos can get things done in the right way. The drive, the push of President Aquino against corruption, I know some people would say it's a nuisance. No, that's not a nuisance. That's the centerpiece. 95, if not 100 percent of our problems in governance, I mean in the government, has to do with corruption. It's governance, it's, it's transparency, you know. It's not as if there's not enough resources. We've proven that. We haven't raised taxes, and yet we have been able to provide a lot more services because we were able to save 30 percent off the cuff. I mean, right then and there, same project, same configuration, but we were able to do it 30 percent cheaper. That translates to efficiency, that translates to productivity, and that translates to more resources that can be applied. The world economy or the financial system recognizes that we, have, we are deciding on a more logical basis, more transparent, more consistent. We've gotten there for, um, because of um, the managing of the deficit relative to GDP, we have gotten a lot of upgrades from three of them, well actually four, three of the majors and one also major credit rating agencies, which brings down our cost of borrowing. You know? So we, we have recovered a lot that was lost due to leakage. We still have a deficit, but the deficit gets financed at a lower interest rate. And we are in a situation where we are able to swap old debt that was uh, very expensive and close to maturation with lesser interest payments and longer maturation. A recent World Bank report states that poverty has remained at about the same level during the last decade, with a little over a quarter of the population below the poverty line. If you eliminate corruption, you begin to eliminate poverty. I think what that means is, given very limited resources of government, you have to spend wisely. You have to make sure that every peso you spend goes to the projects that they're meant to be spent for. You reduce the cost, of, you know, the cost of corruption. And that's what this administration has begun to, to do. Many corporations in the country are now implementing social programs that benefit the poorest of the poor. The Philippines is one of the premier centers in Asia for research, training, and advocacy in corporate governance matters. There is a very great sense in our country now that the private sector has to do its part in uplifting the poor and, and giving opportunities to the poor. Because first of all, from a pragmatic point of view, uh, I guess we have to admit that uplifting the poor and eliminating poverty will at the end of the day improve our ability to market our products. <laughs> they are our customers, but more importantly, I think we are one country. We have one future. We have to work together to, towards, towards a better life for all, all of our people. And that consciousness is very deeply embedded in, in our private sector as well. With approximately 95 million people, the Philippines is the 12th largest country in terms of population. And the local commission on population is expecting this to increase to 101.2 million by 2014. Domestically, the government is investing in education programs to raise the quality of its human capital. We believe that the Filipino people are our greatest national resource. 
this is proven time and again, even during the dark ages when uh, our countrymen would be would go elsewhere, given the right environment, really, really shine in various professions. How do we take it to the extreme? Then if the national, the chief national asset you know, really are the people, then it moves us to invest in the people. As a community of people, we are generally uh, very hospitable, we're English speaking, and um, we're comfortable with different types of nationalities. But more than anything, I guess our resiliency, our positive nature, uh, people say we're the happiest people in the world, uh, even under the most adverse uh, circumstances, even now, you know, we have some very difficult situations in the city of Manila with the kind of floods that we have. Uh, you don't see people complaining, people adjust, they help each other out, there's a Bayanihan spirit that's always there. These are people, that's really our strongest quality. The Philippines has a big talent pool, with 11% working abroad, making overseas remittances an integral contributor to the nation's GDP. Filipinos fill a global demand for added value positions that involve technical competency and English proficiency. Overseas Filipino workers, uh, we exported a lot uh, because of our proficiency in English and uh, good skill sets and work attitude. And it helped the economy a lot for the past two decades. But with the global recession right now, a lot of them are coming back. Not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of opportunities await them here in the Philippines. One among them would be franchising, which has a high success rate. It's very inspiring. From being a, an employee or in the service industry abroad, coming back, they become entrepreneurs. Very inspiring. The 21st century has been defined by Asian political and economic dominance. The Philippines is making sure it is not left behind, and more and more Asians, and executives in particular, are choosing the Philippines to provide the educational backbone to their career growth. The importance of Asia for company expansion cannot be underestimated. When China entered the WTO, it, it shook up the whole world, frankly, in terms of expansion. Uh, watching China grow and the rest of Asia grow has been uh, very revealing of where the future will be. Uh, companies who are expanding in Asia are, are moving very quickly. In fact, one of the limiting factors is their talent uh, acquisitions. And what I see now is uh, applicants are coming from all over the world. Not only do they want to study Asia, study in Asia, but they want to work in Asia. There's a lot of optimism here. Uh, we talk about the four tigers. I just read an article from uh, one of the investment analysts that the you know, Philippines could be the fifth tiger. Being an entrepreneur in the Philippines means tapping into a latent consumer market of almost 100 million people and the entire ASEAN community. If you are English speaking, the Philippines is one of the few countries in the world that can, can uh, speak English to any foreign visitor in the country. But in er everything in, about the Philippines is whatever bad news you've heard, if it has changed a lot, a whole lot of difference. And I should say if anyone you know has come to the Philippines already, you can always ask them. They, 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 they've probably said a lot, they, they've probably experienced a lot of nice things here. And they will be your biggest source uh, of, of information the province of Palawan. Known as the Philippines' final frontier, it is the country's most sparsely populated region and one of the most enchanting places on the planet. It is also a potential gold mine for one of the world's most precious resources, hydrocarbons. The groundwork is now being laid for a more stable and profitable oil and gas industry by opening up production blocks in regions such as Palawan, which stretch far into the West Philippine seas. Several multinational companies have reported considerable progress in both surveying and exploration of the country's hydrocarbon deposits. We actually have done a lot of geological and geophysical investigations of, of the offshore Palawan and we feel that it's got uh, very large potential. Uh, there's one uh, giant field at the moment which is under production and that's the Malampaya field. We actually produce oil out of a smaller field, a Gaelic field, which we're going to um, double production next year. It's been overlooked. So what we've done over the last period is we've invested a lot of money in uh, geophysical and geological studies. We've uh, also uh, drilled a number of wells. Uh, and interestingly enough, I mean, in offshore Palawan, there's a very high success rate. 
Uh, however, to date, a lot of the fines have been relatively modest. Uh, but with oil now at $100 a barrel, there's more impetus to, to develop these smaller discoveries. But in the deeper uh, waters offshore Palawan, we've identified and other companies have identified very large structures with multi-billion barrel of oil potential and these are what we're chasing. My Philippines, a personal look at what makes the Philippines special to the people that live there. My Philippines is all about passion for culinary excellence. I've been a food enthusiast for 25 years and a restaurateur for 15, and I bring this passion to the Philippines through all my restaurant outlets and my projects. National identity has always been a challenge for us, and I feel that this has cascaded down all the way to our cuisine. But I know that slowly the world is starting to take notice. We just need to be united in our passion to make sure that our cuisine takes its rightful place in the global stage. The best way to understand the uniqueness of the Philippines and the Filipino is through its food. My country is going through an amazing culinary renaissance and I'm proud to be part of it. This is my Philippines. 7,107 islands, most of them uninhabited. The Philippines has the capacity and potential to become one of the most prominent tourism destinations in Asia. The government has revised a development agenda that identifies segments with high potential, one that focuses primarily on expanding neighboring Asian markets. The Philippines is today run by what everyone concedes is the most tourism-oriented government in Philippine history. Tourism is about counting the jobs that it's going to generate for our people and the business opportunities it's going to generate for people on the ground. Okay? It is, in a very real sense, a statement that says that tourism will now and forever be the people's business. Previous to that, Tourism was thought of simply as an economic activity that Filipinos who cared to would engage in. Today, by virtue of that declaration on open skies, on uh, creating jobs with it, we are committed to turning tourism into a major national industry. What drives people to return time and time again is the intrinsic human experience. Forbes magazine called the Philippines the friendliest country in Asia, and the ever-present smile and constant happiness of the Filipino people, even in the face of adversity, is contagious. The Philippine experience is uh, unlike any other, not because of the white beaches or the volcanoes or the, the, any country can have those. It is a participative or inclusive experience. In other words, it is intense. Filipinos are wired to make people really feel as friends. That's what the Philippines is all about. It is more fun because it's not just watching. It's not just what you saw, it's who you were with when you saw it that makes the difference. And then finally, of course, you have something which is very frequently overlooked, but people travel for. You have the history of democracy in this part of the world. The Philippines is great to visit for that alone. We are a live museum of how a free democracy builds itself. It's not easy, but it's terrific fun to watch because uh, on some days it's clumsy, on some days it's the most inspiring show on earth. A strong national identity combined with 300 years of Spanish rule and 50 years of American occupation have defined the Filipino people. Although famous for its tropical islands and turquoise waters, the Philippines offers an eclectic mix of landscapes and destinations. Variety is the spice of life here, and exploring it is truly a privilege for travelers. You get to experience beautiful beaches um, and the hotels and the, the services that are provided. 
it's easy. Um, and that was what, what I never dreamed that the Philippines was like. So I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, I think the Philippines is a hidden, hidden treasure and slowly but surely the lid is starting to be lifted off um, and it's becoming more known to the world. So, um, and I'm lucky to have experienced it here and living here for the last couple of years. An international marketing campaign headed by the slogan, It's More Fun in the Philippines, was launched with great success. While the last decade has not been kind to the country's tourism image abroad, the government is counting on Filipinos to be the nation's prime ambassadors. I think the time has come for Filipinos and all people who love the Philippines everywhere to stop agonizing over its so-called bad image. When enough people take it as a matter of responsibility, loyalty, or even just as a plain matter of love, to talk about the good things about the Philippines, we will balance out the picture and the truth will emerge. The Philippines is as worthy of a visit from any country. The Philippines is experiencing a political and economic resurgence that, when followed through, will turn the nation into the global player that it aims to be. It is not just learning from the mistakes of the past, but also driving the present with good governance and business prudence. The world watches as the Philippines moves forward. Nothing is impossible. As long as the people are united, focused, we will get there.